everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Think Tank Thursday. I'm Candy Kelly, and I would not want to be anywhere else but here with you. Thank you for joining me. Before we begin, I want to give some love to our 2023 Think Tank sponsors, Simnox, Redemption Plus, Roller Software, Betson, and Delta Strike. We appreciate their support, which helps us to offer you new episodes um, and bring them to you. As you all know, you've heard us say that train entertainment likes to take some time away from the doing sometimes and spend some time thinking. And we love to spend that time thinking with guests and operators and owners and salespeople. And really, we can learn something from everyone. So just anybody. And today's guest is super special. Um, Denise Killian has joined the train entertainment team as one of our coaching and training specialists. And she comes from a very interesting background, and we could not be more excited to bring her on the team um, to assist us in our growth to our big vision. And I just cannot wait for you guys to meet her too. So what do you say? Why don't we jump in? Welcome to Think Tank Thursday, Denise. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Why don't you take a few minutes and tell everyone a little bit about your background and what brought you to Train Entertainment? So I have spent the past 20 plus years as a broadcast journalist and running newsrooms and living all over the country and going all over the world covering the news for local TV stations. So I decided it was time to step away from, you know, 18 hour days, seven days a week and looking for a new opportunity and a new career after 20 plus years of going full force for so long, but I knew that I wanted something that had to be fulfilling and it had to be a service because at the heart of what a journalist should be doing is serving the community in which they're reporting for. And that's a big part of sort of my DNA. So I knew that I needed to, to be in a company in which service to others and helping others was an essential part of that. And um, I found Trainertainment and the idea of being able to help businesses grow and develop and train and learn and get better. And all of those things was very exciting to me. Uh, and the service aspect of what Trainertainment does for others was really inspiring for me. So I was excited to be able to come be a part of Trainertainment. Awesome. Awesome. So broadcast journalist, which is funny. I know you had to read Beth's book as part of like coming here and you know that she uses journalism as a example a lot of times when she's talking about the qualification stage of her sales process. That's right. So that's we right. now have and our real live journalists on our team. That's right. And it's true. I mean, the, the prospecting for, you know, finding the leads and finding businesses or, or people that you want to work with and is, is, takes a lot of investigation and, and finding out the details that you need in the qualification portion to be able to make the best, the best pitch and best proposal to that individual or to that company is important. And all of those are components of journalism that uh, I've been employing for, for 20 plus years. So when I read her book, I got a big smile on my face. Like, well, now you have a journalist too. I know. So awesome. So when you learned about the trainer entertainment opportunity, and I have to almost say what compelled you to raise your hand, because I've heard the story a little bit about that, like, it wasn't just applying to you. So it was like, what about me? Because you knew Beth personally. Um, but what compelled you to raise your hand and say, I think this is totally different from what I've been doing in the past, but maybe not so much. And I think I can mesh them together. Yeah, so Beth and I were having a conversation. I've known Beth for, for almost 20 years. And um, we were having a conversation and she was telling me how she was ready to grow this business and that you and she had been talking about expanding the coaches and trainers. And I started asking her, what are you looking for? Because I started thinking, I had heard so much about all of the people on the team through Beth. And I've seen the great results that the company has, has been able to provide for its, its clients and its partners. And I thought, huh, this, is, this 
this could be interesting. And, you know, just kind of started asking, what are you looking for? What do you need? Who, who, what qualifications? You know, I, st I, I was, I was qualifying her. Uh, <laughs> and my, is, is this, is this a fit? Is this something that, that you're looking for and that I could do and, and that I could add? Because that's something that's important to me is no matter where I am and what I'm doing, um, I want to make sure that I'm adding. Uh, in a positive way and bringing something different that is helpful and useful to the table. And as Beth and I started talking and I thought, gosh, okay, well, hi, what, what, about, what about me? And, um, you know, thought that this was an opportunity for me to utilize a lot of the skills that I've, I've had for 20 plus years. You know, I've, I've run newsrooms for past 14 years um, and, you know, staffs of anywhere from 50 to 75 people. Training has always been an integral part of what I've done as a leader because I, I know how completely essential it is. And I've been in situations where I've started a job and there was no training. There was no nothing. It was figure it out. And certainly I did. <laughs> and there's what we said about sink or swim. But gosh, isn't it easier and, and better for everybody if we provide information and training and support to meet the expectations and, and to be able to, to do the job. So training has always been something that's been important to me. And I know that that's an aspect that I thought I could really bring to the table for trainertainment. Uh, and the coaching part uh, for sales and for business coaching, you know, I've run newsrooms that had multi-million dollar budgets. I've been responsible for a product that, you know, puts out $40 million in content every year um, in terms of what the product of the news is. So I, I can figure those things out as well. It transfers, those skill sets transfer. So I think that there were a lot of things that, that while it's very different um, and that's also exciting to me to learn new things and to be exposed to different things. So I'm excited to bring the skill sets that I have and the knowledge and experience that I've had for the past 20 plus years and learn new things as well um, from my coworkers here at Train Entertainment, um, but also from our customers and clients. So I'm excited. I think it's interesting. Um, something that you just said made me think about news as a service-based product. It's not something that we I would always think about, but essentially it is a service-based product that you're providing to the masses. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, whether it's uh, providing the weather for something as simple as what am I going to wear today? Um, mm -hmm. Is it going to be raining so I need to leave earlier for work? Uh, to certainly when there's severe weather, but information about what's happening in your community and things that, that you need to be informed of to be able to make choices about your life. You know, that's the heart and center of what good journalism should be about. So it really is, is a service and learning about the community and, and knowing what's important to them and um, is, is something that it ought to be about. Now you've been with us for, um, we're coming up on a month now. What has been um, the most surprising thing about joining Trainertainment that you didn't maybe quite expect? So I know that we talk a lot and Beth's company has always been talking about uh, ser uh, fun training series results. And I was interested to see how that was going to, to work. Uh, because oftentimes it's one or the other, right? You can have a lot yeah. of fun, but you're not getting the good results or you get good results and it might not be so much fun. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> what's been lovely to see is the genuine care and, and respect that everybody on Train Entertainment has for all of our, our clients that we work with and the passion for helping and providing insight and resources to different organizations that is really bespoke to each place because every business has different things that are happening. Mm -hmm. And whether it's, you know, certainly, you know, we have clients that are all over North America. Uh, so culturally there's some differences, but each organization 
is unique in and of itself. So it's been really fun to learn and continue to learn the different challenges that each of these businesses are facing, but also the different resources and the different techniques that I'm learning from, uh, from Trainertainment and being a part of Trainertainment that can help those businesses. Awesome. Uh, well, we are thrilled to have you. Um, have just like some fun questions so people can get to know you a little bit better. Um, what was your very first job? So <laughs> my very first job was in college and I was a studio camera operator at a local television station. Not because I was a journalism major, but frankly, because I needed the beer money as every good college kid does. And so I started working, uh, you know, part-time as a studio camera operator, which kind of is a job that doesn't exist anymore because most cameras are robotic now and all of mm -hmm. that stuff. Um, but I started off doing that. And by the time I left college, I had gone from learning that job, learning how to do lighting, learning how to direct, how to run an audio board, how to do Chiron, um, and then reporting and producing. Uh, so I really was able to have the opportunity to learn every end of being a broadcaster um, that started off as a part-time job just because I was looking for some beer money. <laughs> Well, yeah, normally my second question is what lessons did you learn in that first job that you still carry today? But skill set, I know that you learned a lot that you carried throughout your whole career. So let's take it a little bit deeper and not skill related, just like a right. lesson um, that mm -hmm. what did you learn in your first job that you feel like you still carry today? Show up and say yes. Um, there are opportunities all around in your life, in your professional career, at your job. Uh, and it's about showing up and saying yes uh, in terms of being open to doing something new or different or adding to what your job is. You know, it's not just, well, my job was a studio camera operator. So that's the only thing I'm going to do. And I'm not gonna pay attention to anything else. It was, oh, hey, that's cool. Can I learn how to do that? And, oh, do you need help with that? And uh, those sorts of things. And that curiosity and just showing up to say yes, you have no idea where that can take you and what, that, what doors that can open for you. So that's something that I definitely <clears throat> learned quite, uh, quite intimately in that, in that job is just show up and say yes love that um one thing that I love is that like you know people are like well that's not my perfect job or like I don't know you know I want my perfect job I don't know how people find out what their perfect job is other or their perfect career or their perfect fit or whatever their passion they're calling use whatever word you want other than doing because in doing I find out what I, I don't really like that one that part of this over here I kind of like this part can I take that part and I really want to like learn more about that but but if you're not doing, how do you learn what your calling is or where your passions lie? And you never know until you do it, right? You have something in your mind of, oh, that's what this is. And, and in my mind, it's these things and I don't like that. A lot of times our preconceived notions aren't accurate. And mm -hmm. so it's only by the doing, it's only by being open to different things that you can really find. And maybe you do find, yeah, that's for sure not for me, but that's mm -hmm. important information too. You know, I've, I've learned more through missteps and failures and uh, in my life than the, than the big successes. So there's, there's always the opportunity there and you never know unless you try, show up and say yes. Right? Think Tank is definitely one of those things. When I first uh, found myself thrown into the position of hosting Think Tank, I was like, this is, I will hold this for a little bit of time and then like find somebody to pass this on to because it is not me. And what I've learned is that I actually like interviewing and getting to know the different operators and suppliers and manufacturers and all of the different people and their insights and to have this time to interview them. And I spend a lot of time cultivating like interview questions based off the information that they give me to like draw out more. And I actually enjoy that part of it. So oh, see, there you go. 
<laughs> um, be a journalist too. <laughs> <laughs> um, who's one person, living, dead, fictional, real, can be fake, can be from a book that inspires you? And how does that inspiration show itself in your life? So I have been really lucky to, uh, throughout my life, be exposed to all sorts of different people, uh, uh, which, is, which is a wonderful thing. And I have worked um, for several years with St. Jude organization and being able to meet some of those families who are going through the unimaginable and who are dealing with a child who is, who is ill and what they have to face every day. And still, I have yet to meet a family at St. Jude that didn't still have hope and love and compassion for others, even though they were going through the darkest experiences that I could even imagine. And that's something that inspires me to no end. And, you know, I always try to find the good. Um, and that's, you know, something that, that those families have taught me is no matter what's going on, um, find the good and that to be grateful and appreciative of where you are and what's happening in your life, even when it's not, not ideal, uh, but find the good. I love that. Um, you'll find that I'm generally, um, optimistic about most things so like I so I love that um so in think tank there are two signature questions that a guest could get asked as um when they come you are going to get asked both of them and I have to because sometimes I have guests that will repeat over times and so um they're like different sides of the same coin of a question and so the first side of that is what do you do on a consistent basis to grow yourself I am a voracious reader. I love to learn new things and read and uh, just really delve into things. Um, and I don't know if reader or researcher is the better, uh, the better word there, but you now I love to be able to just really dive deep to try to understand a situation or a topic. Uh, I love to, to read biographies and learn about people in their lives and, and, you know, the things and lessons that you can glean from that. I love uh, history. I'm a big history nerd. So I'm a voracious reader slash researcher. Uh, I am that person who will watch something uh, on, you know, Netflix or something, and it's sort of based in history. And, oh, well, now I have to go and, you know, find out everything about that <laughs> and what was right in the, in the, and the show and what wasn't and what else happened and you know I, I fall down those rabbit holes pretty easily the other thing that I do is travel and that may seem like a weird answer to that but mm -hmm. I found that by traveling and exposing yourselves to different people different cultures different customs different communities it is amazing and enlightening um, and shed so much light on yourself and your life and the choices that you make. And when you are in a different place and see different things and, uh, and that's opportunity to grow and to learn and to change. And so I, I would say, I would say that. Yeah. Thus far, your favorite place you've traveled to. All right. So it's, 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 it's a big question. That's a big question. So my favorite city in the whole wide world is Paris. Um, that's just where I feel totally at home, at ease. I love it, love it, love it. Um, but I will say um, that like, there's just something about Scotland and Northern Ireland that is fabulous and wonderful and beautiful and the people are just so delightful and kind and, and all of those things so so my favorite city in the whole wide world is Paris uh, but 
oh no, Scotland, Northern Ireland, they're they're close up there. Got it. Now we're going to flip the coin to the other side. And the other part of the signature question is, what do you do on a consistent basis to help others grow? So this one is a good question. Gosh, um, you know, for me, I think that a big part of being of service to others is listening. And that listening sometimes is the greatest thing that you can give that you can give somebody. Um, you know, so you got to start with listening because we may think we know what that person needs or, you know, we can see clearly, oh, this is, this is what the deal is. This is what they need. Uh, but you don't know until you really listen. So I think the first thing is listen. And um, whether it is a hard time that a friend's going through or you're working with an, with an employee um, or working with another business, it's, it's listen first and figure out where that person is coming from and meeting them where they are um, and, and having the patience to figure out you can't get from one to 50 in 30 seconds. That, you know, it's, it's you got to meet people where they, they are and listen and truly understand where they are. And then let's get a plan together and let's go. Let's do it. In, in the hiring process for you, one thing I have always said, we have to meet people where they are. And the other thing I always say is that people are exactly where they need to be right now. Um, and so and that Beth is like, you're going to love her because she always says the thing that you say all the time <laughs> about meeting people where they are. So, yeah. um, awesome. Well, we are super excited to have you be part of Turn Entertainment. We have a growth plan and you are helping us um, fulfill that growth plan. But I have to know, what are you most excited about in your new role? I'm excited to learn. Um, I'm excited to... Uh, learn about the the different different businesses and learn really understanding or are working to understand what family entertainment centers are facing right now and what we can do to help them. Like I I just love a challenge and new things, and so I'm excited to we've I've had uh, been able to be on several meetings and have the the zoom thing that i'm excited <laughs> uh to to start getting out there and having those on-site visits um and meeting people in person as well and seeing the centers and and uh really getting to explore the fun that is the family entertainment center um and uh so yeah learning about that is is what i'm most excited about Awesome. We'll see in a couple of months if you get the bug. We always laugh that you meet a lot of people in this industry who are lifers. Like they started running a ride at their regional theme amusement park when they were in high school for a summer job or something. Or um, it was they interned somewhere at college and just never left. And so it's always funny how there's so many people because we always say you either get the bug and you fall in love with this industry and all that it has, or you don't. And there's not a lot of like in-betweeners a lot of times. So we'll find out in a couple of months if the bug has bit you. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I think it is. I think it is. I know that the, the meeting the folks that I've already met, um, they're really great. And um, it's exciting to be a part of helping grow their business. You know, that's, that's a, a tangible, exciting, wonderful thing to, to come back and meet with people and like, hey, we did this and this is what's, what's happened and isn't it great? And their excitement is contagious. Uh, mm -hmm. So... I'm pretty pumped. I'm very excited awesome. to be a part. Well, Denise, thanks for taking uh, some time to introduce yourself to everyone. Uh, if people want to connect with you or learn more about you, where can they find you? And one well, of those is the Train Entertainment website. That's <laughs> yeah. right. I was going to say you can go to trainertainment.net uh, and you can book a growth call with me there. Um, but also uh, I am on LinkedIn uh, as Denise Killian. So looking forward to meeting all sorts of, of new folks and and getting going awesome well thanks and she'll be joining us at iapa this year and so you can stop by the booth and meet denise and we'll narrow down the exact dates later and let everyone know um but 
thanks for your time, Denise. Absolutely. Thanks. And um, it was good to, to see everybody and hope to meet everybody soon. Did you guys not just love Denise? Can you not see how she'll fit right in with this trainertainment team that we are growing here? Um, can not be more happy to have her join the team. So thank you guys for taking the time to meet her and to get virtually introduced to her. I hope you'll seek her out at some of the upcoming shows that we have. Thank you again to our 2023 digital sponsors. And then remember guys, if you have an idea for Think Tank, if you'd like to be a guest on Think Tank, you want to be a sponsor of Think Tank, you can always, always reach out to me, candy at trainertainment.net. We can talk about whatever your idea is. Um, be sure to check out where you can connect with us in real life. All of our upcoming events and appearances can be found at trainertainment.net under our events menu. And thank you guys. And I'll check you on the next episode.